Hey everybody, um, so I, uh, I was looking around online, um, I don't know, I can't remember where I came across these, um, I, uh, I, was, I think I saw some videos on YouTube, like, talking about, like, little, um, mech kits, or, like, I feel like there's, there's a lot of, like, mechs that have guns, there's not as many like construction robots, you know, and um, I uh, I like these kits because they're like totally modular, right? Like you can take the little parts and then you know you can make like a front loader or you can make a you know some kind of like construction robot and you don't have to put the guns on them. <laughs> um, but this is like a it's more of like a kid's toy. Um, and then they're super, super cheap. Uh, I think that these, that I've seen them go for like $8 on eBay or like a little bit more expensive on Amazon. But if you go on, probably if you go on like AliExpress, um, you could probably, you know, you could probably get them like super, super cheap. Uh, it is a Chinese kit and they're called Rahio. I think, or like Multi Abyss, um, Thanglin Tech. I've I've heard I've heard these. Uh, uh, I've I've seen these kind of advertised differently on different websites, but uh, yeah, super super cheap. And then um, they're like the perfect scale to be set dressing for uh, twenty eight millimeter, thirty two millimeter. And uh, they come with um, like the parts to make a few different little designs. So I just wanted to share, I wanted to show these and I wanted to show you what they look like with a, with a decent paint job. Um, I, I painted up, I did a couple little designs and then I painted them up. Uh, and they, you know, they look perfect. Like they're actually like the perfect scale for uh, for heroic scale miniatures, like 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter miniatures. So, uh, so yeah, like I'll, I'll show you the kit. I'll show you some of the designs that you can make, and then I'll show what they, uh, how I painted them. Uh, yeah. Hey everybody. Um, so I, uh, I ordered. I got this kit, these, um, this is, um, who makes these? These are, are Rahio, and um, this is, uh, uh, these are really, really cheap. It's a Chinese uh, manufacturer, <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's like, a, it's a toy. Like, it's a, more of like a kid's toy. But the thing is, is that um, there's all these really cool, they're like totally modular. And then you can make all these really cool little kind of random sci-fi kits out of them. And one of the things that I love is that um, the parts are just snap fit and they're totally modular. So you can just kind of like save whatever you don't use or like keep the sprues or something and, um, you know, bash them together to make kind of whatever you want. So I looked and then as far as I could tell, when I looked online, they're very close to um, uh, 28 millimeter. So like I have, um, this is a 28 millimeter figure. Like um, if, uh, if you look at, like with these guys, um, you can see this is the, the little driver that came in the box, right? And then you can see where his knees are in comparison to this guy. This is uh, um, Maelstrom's Edge. Um, and then they're, they run very true, like 28 millimeter. And then I've got, let's see, I've got a um, Dust Tactics figure these run very much like true 32 millimeter. You can see like, if you were standing up straight, you know, uh, or, or uh, let's see, infinity. And then this is a big mech, 
but you know you can see like the head size and, and infinity again is like very true 32 millimeter uh, so I want to use these guys for like <laughs> Stargrave and um, five parsecs from home and, and uh, like all, all kinds of games like that just like miniature agnostic sci-fi games but I want just some kind of like little vehicles and stuff so what I started to do was I kind of hit some of these parts with just a, a spray paint um, and like their press fit you know you could use you could use like a, a, a plastic glue like a styrene glue you know a plastic cement like it is that kind of plastic where it will um, you can bond things together with um, plastic glue <clears throat> which doesn't work as well through spray paint but um, it uh, <clears throat> It, um, these are press fit, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could like shave off the sides of the connections and stuff um, to kind of, I just wanted to put some color on these guys, like, um, like if I take some of this paint off, you can kind of see the, uh, the original color through there. Or like I left some of the, the color showing on the sprue. Like I, I uh, spray painted it on both sides with the spray paint. But uh, so anyways, um, this kit that I got, you can make, um, what I believe it is, is that you can make like this guy and this guy, or you can make this guy and this guy. It's like you, the, they give you all of the parts to make two of the little models. And then these kits are super cheap. Like they're, um, I've seen them go for like $8 on eBay. Um, a little bit more expensive on Amazon, including shipping. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to build up one of these and I wanted to give it a good paint job. But I'm thinking about doing something different. Um, so uh, spray paint, you know, it, it makes a really, really super, super tough layer of paint um, to use as like a primer. Um, so what I think I want to do though is, like I do like this color. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do some, I'm just gonna put these together like this, and then I'm gonna hit uh, this sprue with like a chrome spray paint, and then maybe do, even do a little bit of hairspray chipping or something, some kind of uh, chipping on these. To try and or do some panel lining and stuff, and try and give these a good paint job and see how they look. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna do a little bit more spray paint and then some of the parts do come partially painted or, um, you know, uh, they uh, they have a paint job. It's, it's, it's decent, it's not that bad, their paint job. Like you could just throw these together and then use them as, uh, you know, um, your uh, like vehicles or whatever, like they have, um, they're colored plastic and they look, they look good just um, put together. But anyways, yeah, let's do a good paint job. Okay, so I took everything and hit it outside with some uh, spray paint. 
you can see like there's the original color. I just like clipped it and hung it in a little cardboard box and sprayed it. And I like this kind of chrome look. Uh, and then when I said that this was all like styrene plastic earlier, I lied. Some of it is actually um, sort of rubbery plastic, like these little O-rings and like things that, you know, snap together that have a little bit of flex to them. It's more like an ABS plastic, um, like uh, Legos, you know, or something like that. So plastic glue is not gonna work on that. And, um, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. But, um, <clears throat> so I am gonna take things off the sprues eventually, but it's a good way to get that really tough layer of spray paint on there just to hang these and then spray them because that, um, you know, like I am in Colorado, so we do get a lot of sun and it's pretty dry. So it's kind of ideal for using spray paint outside, you know, but it's like in the can, it's ready to go. Um, so I am gonna start taking things off the sprues, but um, with kits like this, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit easier to keep track of all the parts because depending on what you wanna make, you know, you don't wanna to have to sort through everything to, uh, to look for the right parts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these I'm gonna snip them off the sprues as I go, just to keep them organized. And then you know if I need to do any seam line scraping or anything like that, then I can do that too. But I've got some color on there, and uh, you know half half the battle. So anyways, I'm gonna put these together and then I'm gonna finish the paint job. Okay, so uh, this is what I ended up building. Um, these are, this is all of the parts that were in this kit. Um, I was a little bummed out because this, to make this thing, this was like my favorite kind of design. Uh, this guy. Um, it takes like the, the arm, the, this chassis thing, and then it takes, uh, like this uh, bulldozer thing. So it's like you can only make that one design or you can make like a little robot and a uh, like bulldozer thing. But then, you know, you've got like some, a bunch of parts left over. Like I've got these robot arms and, uh, and then if I wanted to make this guy more of like a, um, um, like a, a loader thing from um, uh, like alien or aliens. Um, come off, come off. I could take one of these off, uh, off here and then put it on here. Like they're, you know, it's a totally like modular kit. I really like how that looks. I think that's cool. Um, but you know, like, or I could take the seat off of this one. Ooh. And put it in, you know, put like one seat in the middle. Um, just totally like modular kit. You can make whatever you want out of them. So, you know, like I, I love a good modular design. I'm a huge fan. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of parts left over for, uh, for kit bashing. So, um, yeah, and then you can see the, like the spray paint, there's some spots where the, uh, you know, the, the sprues like show through um, and like, you know, I could do some seam scraping if I wanted to, I'm not really not really feeling seam scraping right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do some like rust and kind of chipping stuff uh, on these, um, just to uh, like cover up the, um, anywhere where, where 
you know, like I snipped something off the spruce and didn't get it with the spray paint or whatever. And then I'm gonna do some like weathering stuff on these. I just wanna show you guys what these look like with a good paint job on them. Cause I think that they're gonna paint up really well. And then, you know, like super, super cheap, like kind of uh, dressing for whatever game you know you're playing like like they, they look perfect on like some loading dock or you know whatever so and then i even um i bashed some parts together like um let's see i think i want to put it i want to put like an engine block kind of thing on the top of this um so and, and like I can just melt through the, um, uh, I can use like a plastic glue and then this has acetone in it so that will melt through the paint and then it will, you know, soften up the, um, this plastic and then I can just bash them together like that's what I used back here. Gotta find the other one. There's another one of these floating around somewhere that I wanted to put back there to just kind of cover up that little, those little gubbins, you know. Um, so, you know, not quite like a Gundam-like level kit or anything like that, but definitely uh, good enough. And super, super cheap. So... Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna glue everything up how I want it, and then I'm going to do um, do some more weathering and painting. Okay, so these are put together pretty much how I want them. I'm actually I'm not gonna glue up some things because uh, I actually, you know, I think I might <laughs> like mix and match parts later. I forgot to mention that these come with like stickers and water slide decals. I think the water slide decals are probably a little bit past like who these are marketed towards, like kids, you know, but the stickers I can see uh, somebody sticking stickers on. So I'll use the water slides um, <clears throat> at some point or something. So I'm gonna make a, uh, just make a little packing foam brush. Um, so this is just packing foam insert and then, uh, you know, get some nice texture to do some, uh, some rust stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm using, um, P3, uh, Bloodstone to do a little bit of, uh, kind of rusty chipping stuff. Um, so I think... Um, so I do want to like kind of cover up, um, anywhere where there's, um, like, uh, uh, seam lines, you know, where things like need to be scraped, like on, uh, on here. Just to, cause I'm, I don't feel like, you know, cleaning up my paint job that much, but I want to like create some kind of interesting little, um, rusty, uh, texture stuff in some places. And I'm going to kind of focus it down here towards the, the bottom of, uh, to make it look like these things are, you know, kind of dirty, like they've been used for some industrial purpose and didn't just come off the like factory floor. So I just want to put some little chips, you know, a little bit of rusty stuff kind of around in a few places. Not everywhere, you know, it just, it kind of like stands out. Um, But 
but I'm going to go over this color too with uh, some, uh, some metal, you know, do like kind of a dry brush on some parts. Okay, now I've got a pretty small sized makeup brush. Then I'm going to use some uh, P3 cold steel and I'm just going to do like kind of like an over brush, like dry brush. Um, just kind of want to like pick out some, you know, flex in the paint and stuff. Uh, Use a, a small brush. Um, don't want to use anything good, but like a, kind of a crapped out or a cheapo brush, and then just kind of like do a little like edge highlighting. to look like it's in good shape. All right, and I'm just gonna do a few little, you know, kind of last details. And then I'm gonna take these outside and I'm gonna seal the, uh, the paint job before I start doing, uh, I wanna do an oil wash on them to kind of dirty them up. But I like the, the chipped paint. That part I'm happy with. Change my mind before I take these out to seal them. I'm gonna do some pigments, and then this is just um, uh, pan pastel like uh, pigments. And uh, I tend to go a little bit heavy-handed with uh, the pigments, just because when. Um, when you seal down the paint job, when you do like, um, uh, something to, you know, seal the, the lacquer down, um, it really, really dulls down the pigments. So they just kind of settle into the cracks and stuff and like sort of act more like a wash than a dry brush. I'm just gonna put some all over, like get the tires and stuff, and just make them look nice and dusty. Especially the tires. I wanna get the tires real good. So I uh, took these outside and then hit them with some uh, clear coat. And you can see just how much the, um, the putting a uh, clear coat on just dulls down those pigments. So now I want to do, I'm going to do an oil wash. I'm just going to mix up some. I just want to have some like oil wash to, to 
to keep, you know, like, so I'm just gonna mix up a fair amount. Um, so these are just like garbage um, oil paints. So they're like cheapo cheapo. And then I'm using um, odorless mineral spirits because the the real stuff stinks. <laughs> or I mean, odorless mineral spirits. That's what you want because um, it's kind of intense. All right. The smell is intense. Um, so now I'm just gonna mix that up until it's nice and runny. And then this is yellow ochre, but um, just a nice earth tone. And then I have some burnt umber here. I want it to be, I want it to have enough color uh, enough pigments so that um, it, you know, it will show up on the model, but I also want it to be runny enough to where I can just like let it dry and then kind of wipe off a little bit later. Or you can come back in with like Q-tip or something with some more mineral spirits. And then, uh, you know, um, dab it off. All right. Again, not using my good brushes. I'm just kind of slopping it on there, not really being careful at all, you know, just uh, putting some color down. And then uh, later on, you know, if I want to, I can go back in and kind of dab some off or um, adjust, adjust how I want it to look. But um, I will show some pictures of what these guys look like when they're dry. But uh, I think these are just a cool little kit for like, um, kind of like set dressing, you know, or like a background stuff. <laughs> um, especially if you're doing something or like you have like a theme where you're on a, I don't know, like a, star base or like a you know like some kind of industrial looking thing just make some interesting looking like scatter like cover stuff to break things up but yeah uh i think that's gonna be it you guys so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one take care